observations with Robert Meyer Burnett. This next one comes from Jerry Kelly. Hello, Rob, illustrious leader of the post-geek singularity. I hope you can help me. <laughs> I've developed an obsession with Star Trek V The Final Frontier, specifically the lost ending, which changed dramatically throughout production. From Elizabeth Shatner's Making of book, we can deduce that Shatner managed to shoot most of the film's ending footage on location, knowing he could use the soundstage to complete the footage back at the studio. However, upon viewing the Rockman footage, Mr. Shatner decided that it was not convincing. It is at this point that details become a little sketchy, but it seems he instructed Brian Farron, provider of the special effects, to come up with an optical replacement for the Rockman, while simultaneously reshooting all of the footage that would then contain this optical. Apparently, the optical replacement was described as a cobra-like entity, which would then chase after Kirk. It was also known as the Rock Blob. From what I can deduce, this would have comprised a number of scenes in which the Rock Blob would menace the three central characters, culminating in chasing Kirk up the rock face until Kirk is rescued by the Bird of Prey. What fascinates me is that this optical was apparently finished, and therefore this long scene should exist in one form or another. But Mr. Shatner again decided that this optical SFX was no more convincing than the rock man, and as such, he was forced to cut the scenes down to a minimum, implying the characters were pursued by an unseen entity, with the only reveal being a reuse of the god SFX. The end result is confusing and unsatisfying, but Mr. Shatner does at least manage to just about convey his intentions. Listening to you on this week's Lost Scenes episode of the Inglorious Trexperts really got my juices flowing as you mentioned you had spoken to Brand Farron about this and also that you may have seen some footage I am referring to above. I would be beyond grateful if you could elaborate on what you saw and your conversation with Mr. Brand Farron. Thanks again, Rob, for all you do. Truly, nobody does it better. Best wishes, Jerry K. Well, thank you, Jerry K. So what Jerry is referring to is everyone fav everyone's favorite Star Trek film, Star Trek V, The Final Frontier, directed by the mighty Shatner himself, uh, I think is a deeply, deeply flawed film. Uh, and part of it is because I think uh, tonally, I've read Shatner's original treatment. He, he did write an original treatment uh, for that film called Act of Love, that it, it, it has the same kinds of story beats, but the way they were presented, when you read that, it was like, wow, this could have been a really, a really beautiful film. But I think because of Star Trek IV's popularity, Shatner wanted to make a very serious meditation on all these issues, but the studio's like, nope, we have to inject the film with lots of humor. And I think that really torpedoed what it was they were trying to do because, hey, look, I understand the idea of, 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 of humor uh, in the film is fine, but I think tonally one of the most detrimental things to Star Trek V is the wildly divergent tone, as with anything. If it doesn't seem or feel correct, if it's shoehorned in there, then it becomes a little bit silly. And I think a lot of Star Trek V is too silly, and it didn't start out that way. Um, and I think, you know, you watch you watch even the opening scene. You're a Vulcan. You know, there's some good stuff there. The opening of Star Trek V, the teaser, is, I think, great. Really intriguing, really interesting. Um, but the rest of the film, again, and then coupled with with Shatner, he's a first-time director making a, a large-budget movie at the time. You know, they were shooting on location. There's a lot of elaborate stuff going on with horses, and uh, you're out in the desert shooting. So that was problematic. But what was the most problematic thing for, for, for them is Bran Farron, who, by the way, is a mad genius. Bran Farron's got a company. They're building all kinds of all kinds of technology, real world technology. Um, he had done work on say altered states and what the production was trying to do was save money by not going back to ILM. I think with ILM, they were a little Star Trek four was kind of ILM back in the mid eighties was overextended and they had a great reputation, but they weren't, they weren't even necessarily able to deliver what they normally delivered because they were so spread thin on so many different movies and why not? They're making tons of money. 
And I think what they were trying to do with Star Trek V more than anything was save money. So they went to Brand Farron and his group, and they were woefully ill-equipped to deliver the kind of effects that they needed to for Star Trek V. It wasn't the fault of the production. You know, they were sold a bill of goods. Brand Farron talked a good game. He even admitted this to me. Uh, I, I was doing a um, uh, an audio commentary. I actually interviewed him for uh, the Manhattan Project movie, uh, the teen the teen film from the '80s, because he did the uh, effects on that. And it just it just didn't work out. All the things that they planned for the end of the film, it, in, if nothing else, they just ran out of money. They they didn't have the money left to do what they needed to do to make that climax work. And no fix in the world could help. I did see footage of these things that you speak of, the Rockman footage. Some of it wound up. I was at one point. I was producing the DVD special features for Star Trek V. I did Shatner's commentary. I did a great interview with him. That very little of it was left on that disc. Even Paramount, when I was working on the the um, the DVD for that, a uh, Shatner's audio commentary was heavily edited. And one of the reasons I didn't continue, I didn't finish that disc. And part of it was I was so annoyed with the Paramount legal team. Like, I'll give you an example. Uh, Shatner was talking about how he was inspired by Timothy Leary and the experiments with LSD and expanding your mind. That that was something that uh, in, inspired the character of Cybok, Lawrence Luckinbill's character in that film. And I would get notes back from Paramount Legal saying, you can't, you can't have William Shatner talk about how this character was, was inspired by a counterculture drug figure. Star Trek doesn't deal with drugs. And then I would write back letters. I'm like, well, all the way back to the first season episode, Mud's Women, they did. The first season episode of, of Next Generation, Symbiosis, basically dealt with one planetary system hooking another planetary system on drugs and not telling them. And, and Star Trek has always looked at, upon those things. And to say that to have the director of the film, the man who came up with the story, not be able to talk about his influences, I mean, this is ridiculous. This is not, I mean, they were very protective. I understand why that went down, but it happened. And it was really frustrating. I mean, I, fi I find it frustrating. That was, for those of you who might want to know, when you're working on a DVD special edition or Blu-ray special edition or 4K special edition now, one of the things that's very frustrating is when you hear stories that are told you have to submit everything to be vetted by the legal department because the legal department can't have any of the filmmakers saying anything disparaging about executives or other people in Hollywood. Well, that's not what I'm looking to do. I was never a, I was never a, I wasn't trying to be a muckraker. What I was looking for was the stories behind production. And I think that where uh, Shatner came up with the inspiration for Cybok was, was totally relevant, but I couldn't talk about that. So I had to also tread uh, very, very uh, gently across what happened on the film. But really, all of these problems can be chalked up to the fact that the studio um, wanted more humor injected in the film, and they kept cutting the budget. So Shatner, literally, Star Trek V is an unfinished, unrefined movie, not unlike Star Trek The Motion Picture. Unfortunately, Star Trek The Motion Picture always sold really well on home video, and when I got involved with doing Star Trek V, it was, there was talk at first of going back and doing a re-edit of it, revisiting that film. But unfortunately, we weren't able to, mostly because there is no ending, like you said. You know, the ending just wasn't there. The Rockmen, I, there's still glimpses of the Rockmen that appear on the special features, and you can see the whole idea was ill-conceived in the first place. And it just it just didn't work. But there's there's just not that much to see. What is there is woefully lacking. And it's amazing to me. It looks like something that would have been shot for a student film. It's hard to believe that they went down that road so far in Hollywood. But they did. Uh, Jerry, what an interesting letter. Thanks for writing in. I appreciate it.